Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We go behind the scenes to see how bullets are made, as well as an insight into how things are done in an ammunition factory. There have been a lot of inventions over the past centuries. There hasn't been anything that has changed the course of history as much as ammunition and explosives. The idea of missiles, guns, and other explosive weapons is dreadful enough to send shivers down your spine. However, the fundamental instruments of all explosives are bullets. Sure, missiles are bigger and more technologically advanced, but they still work in the same principle as bullets. So how are these tiny objects of destruction made? Before the invention of explosive weapons, men from older generations used crude weapons during battles like sticks with blades at the tip, which they called spears, swords, daggers, etc. While these weapons were very efficient, they soon noticed that firing at the enemy from a distance created more impact. So, they developed weapons like slings and stones, bows and arrows, throwing their spears with great force from a long distance. Over the years, they built on this technology and developed more advanced projectile weapons. The invention of bullets was a breakthrough for the ammunition industry. It's unbelievable that many other inventions are based on bullets. For example, just think about how many kinds of guns there are. Rifles, snipers, machine guns, revolvers, pistols, and so many more and the fact that all of them operate on bullets is insane. So how exactly are these bullets made? Let's get right into it, shall we? Bullets consist of different parts, which are made from a wide variety of metals and other instruments. Traditionally, the core of a bullet is made purely from lead or a combination of lead and another metal, and because lead is a soft metal, the core is encased in a harder metal called a bullet jacket. This jacket is mostly made of copper, but it can also be made from other hard metals. Bullet oils and lubricants are also used to prevent these compartments from sticking together. First, the lead core of the bullet is made, and this can be made using one of two methods, casting and swagging. The two processes are completely different from each other, but they both produce the same results, that is, strong lead bullets. Whether regular ones or hollow tip bullets, which are more lethal, the first method, casting, involves melting the lead or its alloy and pouring it into the bullet mold. The bullet mold is a hinged piece of equipment with a hollow space when closed. This space is shaped like a bullet, therefore, it's used to give the molten lead the typical bullet shape. As simple as this sounds, several precautions must be taken to prevent the production of imperfect and inefficient bullets. The lead blocks are placed in a large metal or ceramic crucible where they are heated at a high temperature of over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. While the lead liquefies, the mold is prepared and fortified against cracks or holes, especially if it's new. First, the bullet mold is cleaned with soap and water and thoroughly dried. Next, it's inspected for cavities, cracks, or any holes. If any are found, the cavity is smoked using a lighter and the carbon deposits produced fill up these spaces, making the mold cavity free. Once all the cavities have been filled, the mold is ready to contain the molten lead. The mold is heated for a few minutes before pouring in the liquid metal. Then, the lead is poured from the crucible into the closed mold, and it's left for a while to cool. After cooling, the mold is opened, and the lead, which has now taken the shape of a bullet, falls out or is knocked off. The bullets with deformities are improved by cutting or filling. However, in cases of extreme deformities, the bullets are melted and passed through the molting process all over again. The second method of forming the lead core is called swagging. Swagging is different from casting in that lead metal doesn't have to be melted before being shaped into bullets. In this method, the lead is placed into a machine called a die, which works like a hydraulic press and compresses the metal at high temperatures. The squashed metal passes through thin cylindrical holes at the bottom end of the die as thin lead wires and this is called extrusion. The process is monitored closely to prevent air from being trapped inside the wires and ensure that the density of each lead wire is uniform at every point. These wires are made in different sizes. Depending on the size of the hole, the bigger wires are used to make stronger bullets than those made from the smaller wires. Next, the wires are taken to a swage die for the swagging process. Here, the wires are cut into the appropriate weight, length, and diameter for the caliber, 
and the swage die compresses them into the desired bullet shape, which matches the dimensions of the kind of bullet being produced. The die is built to have high accuracy, so all bullets produced per batch are identical in every way. Otherwise, they wouldn't fit into the bullet jackets. The swagging method is preferred to casting because it produces more perfect bullets. Because of how expensive it is, swagging is used only in large-scale bullet producing companies. The bullet jackets are also prepared now that the bullets have been made. The jackets are made using a harder metal than lead to protect the relatively soft bullet. Apart from protective functions, the jackets also add a little bit of density to the bullets, making them resistant to air on the path of their trajectory after being fired from a gun. The metal mostly used for casing the lead bullets is copper because of its strength, glistening property, and ability to bind well with the lead. Typically, the copper sheets are prepared by melting and beating copper metal until they are flexible enough to wrap around the bullets. Obviously, this is a tasking and time-consuming process, and it's particularly difficult to control how much copper is wrapped around each bullet and ensure that it's uniform for all the bullets. However, with the help of technology and a good understanding of science, an easier option has been in use for the past few decades, and that is electroplating. Copper metals or alloys are placed in an electrolytic cell, and electricity is passed through them until pure copper is separated from impurities. The electroplating process begins with preparing the electrochemical solution of copper. Once the solution is prepared, the lead bullets are immersed in it, and after a very short while, copper atoms get deposited on the body of the bullets. This way, thin cases of copper enclose each bullet, and apart from ease, this process also ensures the formation of a strong bond between the copper and the lead bullets. However, the thing about electroplating is that it takes more time to complete than using copper sheets to enclose the bullets, but the result is so much better. Once the bullets have been coated with copper, they are sent to a hydraulic press for one final swagging. In the press, the excesses of the copper-plated bullets are cut off ensuring that their dimensions stay within the desired range of values. Next, the bullets are checked for irregular shapes, and those found are corrected. Finally, they are polished to enhance the glistening appearance of the copper, where they are boxed up and sent off to companies that buy them worldwide. What do you think about bullet production? Leave your answer in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.